Hey, what's up, folks? How's it going? This is Wodge. Hope you guys are all doing well. So as you may have known, the new RX 500 series of graphics cards are out, and we've been doing a lot of testing with the new XFX RX 570. As you can see, it looks very similar to the 400 series of GPUs launched by XFX last year. And like the previous generation, 400 series of GPUs is based off a of Polaris 10 architecture. So it's really designed for somebody that hasn't upgraded their GPU in a while. Certainly if you're a 400 series owner, you still have uh, the uh, RX 470. You're probably not going to find that this upgrade is uh, really that worthwhile. Uh, now, we are going to take a look at the performance uh, benefits of this card compared to the previous generation, as well as how it compares against uh, the uh, GTX 1060 from NVIDIA. But first, let's talk about uh, the XFX uh, version that we have over here. As you can see, we have a uh, dual 90 millimeter fans. There's also a unibody copper heat sink. And at the back of the graphics card, we have that really nice X. FX aluminum backplate which should help dissipate heat a little bit more effectively but definitely makes the card look a lot cooler. Now uh, in terms of the actual specification coming from the RX 470 you could see uh, from a stream processor side compute units texture units ROMs everything is pretty much identical from the previous generation card since it's based off of the same architecture Polaris 10. The real difference is going to be uh, more on terms of base clock speed as well as boost frequency and now we have uh, higher voltage capacity on these new chips. Uh, the TDP is rated for about 150 watts compared to 120 watts on the previous generation card. Uh, the uh, RAM is uh, about the same spec, so uh, both are 4 gigabyte capacity, uh, same uh, memory bandwidth of 256 bit. The only real memory speed increase that you get is from uh, the uh, clock speed, which is going to be around uh, 7 gigabits per second uh, versus 6.6 .6 gigabits per second on the 400 series side and you are going to have a little bit more overclocking headroom if you decide to overclock your GPU. Now moving forward the first thing that I want to test out was the actual system power consumption using Furmark. Uh, since the new uh, GPUs are going to be a little bit more power hungry I want to see in a more real world circumstance on how hungry they really are and as you can see uh, the system uh, draws about uh, 241 watts using the RX 570 about uh, 212 watts using the 470 and uh, when you install a GTX at 1060 you're looking at a little bit more wattage than even the 500 series about 248 watts check out the description down below if you want more detailed information on what our actual benchmarking system is comprised of now at this point let's actually get into our uh, gaming benchmark results I'm going to stop talking at this point and you can take a look at the average frames per second uh, both on uh, some synthetic tests and some more real world uh, gaming titles so let's get right into it. Now, in summary, you can see that the new RX 570 isn't a massive upgrade uh, from the 470. That seems pretty obvious. As we mentioned before, it's really designed for somebody that hasn't upgraded their GPU in a while. And the nice thing is you're not going to pay anything extra since it's pretty much going to replace uh, the uh, 470. And you're going to get a little bit more overclocking potential with these new graphics cards. We're going to play around with the overclocking settings uh, to see how it really compares. But uh, generally speaking, as a factory, a clock a graphics card you're going to get anywhere between 8 to 12 percent a performance bump uh, coming from the 400 series counterpart uh, but really other than that guys that's really it uh, give us a thumbs up if you like this video check out the description down below for all the detail information about everything we talked about thank you so much for watching thanks for your support and we'll see you later take care